Uh, the Iron Bowl, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. It's on CBS. And I put this on here only because, like, Virginia, Virginia Tech was the other one. But I'm an Alabama fan. I have to talk about the Iron Bowl, the week of the Iron Bowl. And we're not going to hit it on the it, – it means nothing almost to the big national narrative anywhere. And who the hell wants to bet on this game? Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know of anybody that really does – uh, because you got T.J. Finley at quarterback. Bo Nix is, of course, out. Auburn's field goal kicker, Anders Carlson, out for this game. they got multiple injuries all over the place. The Harson stuff is, is what I am the most interested in with this because who knows what is going to end up happening in two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is, when we got to figure out, okay, is he still going to be the head coach? Uh, is it possible that they do a one-and-done? Because if... <laughs> I'm, can you just I'm, imagine a world. You're an Alabama fan. I don't. I don't know. I don't mean to induce strife. Can you imagine a world where Brian Harrison beats Alabama by two touchdowns and then and then still gets fired to get vaccinated? <laughs> I mean, it's it would not shock me. Nothing would shock me in this rivalry uh, at all. Uh, that especially is, that is a. About peak chaos. Yeah, that's yes. hilarious. Uh, Alabama has not won in Jordan Hare Stadium since 2015. They they lost the last two there, 2017 and 2019. Yeah, it's you, you look at just overall numbers. There's a reason Alabama's favored by 19 and a half points here. Uh, the total is 55 and a half. They are not expecting many points from the Tigers this weekend. You know I love net points per drive. Alabama's number three in that regard. Auburn number 61. Uh, just overall uh, turnover margin. Auburn number 80. Alabama number 19. Uh, but on the other side, I mean penalties. Like Alabama's number 84 in penalties per game and penalty yards per game, and Auburn 37 and 32. This this Alabama team is still young, and when they go on the road, all except for the Mississippi State game, which still makes no sense to me, they they've looked awful on the road every time they've gone somewhere, aside from Starkville. I I am going to take Auburn to cover the 19 and a half because I do not trust this young Alabama team, uh, especially with Georgia coming up. Everybody knows about the rivalry, but the majority of the players on this Alabama team are not from the state of Alabama. <laughs> they don't know all that much about the rivalry, and they are still young. I would assume that Auburn will find a way to keep this low scoring. Alabama's not going to pull a whole lot of stuff out of the bag, I don't believe. So I would assume that that Auburn will be able to keep this, you know, 31 to 13 gets me a cover. That sounds you know, reasonable. I don't think Auburn is going to give up like a ton of huge plays or anything like that. I uh, I kind of expect this to be a little lower scoring and Alabama to be able to run the ball a little more. They Auburn's not been great at stopping the run here lately. That's that's my direction on this, but the the numbers would would say differently. I would believe. What what do your numbers say? Yeah, so so my line here is uh, Alabama by about 21 points. Yeah. And so I I will pick them to cover, and I think I have a couple. I think I have two reasons here. When the last game that Auburn won was Ole Miss, and the way they beat Ole Miss is they made Matt Corral really uncomfortable. They pressured him on a third of dropbacks, and his completion percentage on those dropbacks was 25%, right? And so they disrupted up front. They absolutely have the trenches for all the issues that they have with the quarterback and with their secondary, which I'll get to in a second. Their their, their trenches are, are pretty solid on both sides. Bryce Young pressured on almost 35% of his dropbacks and completing almost, so so 71.4 adjusted completion percentage. They've dropped four of those passes. The dude is what, 20, 19? And doesn't care about 350 pound men trying to kill him. He just gets away. He has been sacked 15% 15 of the time when he's pressured, he gets sacked. 15% of the time on pressures, not on all dropbacks, just on pressures. That's impressive. Um, And so I, I think that he's so good under pressure that immediately nullifies Auburn's biggest strength because then Auburn can choose, okay, do we bring an extra guy and be disruptive? But then we leave our secondary, which is 98th in EPA per pass, open to freak athletes to exploit and Bryce Young, who's pretty good under pressure. So I think there's a lot of stress on this Auburn defense. The flip side, what Auburn's been able to do, again, Ole Miss, other other games, really stout in the rush defense, 28th in EPA per rush. Alabama doesn't care. They're 62nd in EPA per rush. They're 8th in EPA per pass. They're they're passing on 44 or rushing on 44% of early downs. They're, they're slinging the ball. I think they're going to pass all over Auburn. I'm going to eat my words for this because it's a rivalry game. <laughs> but the one thing, the one thing that Auburn's been able to do with TJ Finley is rush the ball. 18th in EPA per rush on offense. Alabama since week five, 
third in rushing defense. I really think that nothing here on paper looks good for Auburn. Um, I'm going to trust the numbers. I will say if Auburn wins this game, this is the meanest thing I'm going to say on this show, Gary. <laughs> this is the game that, that starts TJ Finley's used car dealership empire. This is it. They're like, TJ Finley, he won that Alabama game in 2021. He filled in for Bo Nix. Nobody thought he was going to do it. I'm going to buy a car from him. This is the start of that career right here, man. You're you're talking about uh, Van Tiffin's motor cars in in Birmingham, (laughs) Alabama, is what you're talking about. Uh, Because Van Tiffin was known for one game, and that was the 1985 Iron Bowl with that 52-yard field goal. Yeah, I I can totally see it. I could totally but see. I'm it. gonna go. I'm gonna go Alabama. I'm gonna take Alabama. That, that makes sense. I'm I'm factoring in the look ahead spot. Don't get anybody hurt before Georgia. You know all that kind of mess, which is insane to think about in a rivalry game like this. But a lot more at stake here uh, coming down the line. So yep. we'll we'll see. Would it surprise me if Alabama covers the 19 and a half and just rolls them? No, because it, it's much the they could use the same blueprint that. Ohio State used against Michigan State, which is uh, if you get up by 40, you don't have to worry about the second half. Right. You know, and that is that is entirely possible here. You you could definitely see some plays breaking their way, and they just bust this thing open. So, so I'll take Auburn because I have seen the crazy Jordan hair magic, and I will, uh, <laughs> I will always be terrified of it for whatever reason. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.